it. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was not the result I was expecting. Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. My name is Becky. If you are new, welcome. Today in my kitchen, we are gonna be making two different type of dog treats. The first one we're gonna make, we are going to freeze dry beef liver and beef heart. I buy a half a cow and a whole pig every few years. And I request every single part of that animal. When you buy meat from a local rancher, if you don't request the organ meat, they just throw it away. And I've never felt comfortable about having them throw it away. I know for me and my family, the best way to use this liver up is not for Josh and I to consume it because we don't, it sits in my freezer, but it's to freeze dry it and make it a dog treat. The second dog treat we're gonna be making is an oat pumpkin treat with a little bit of peanut butter in it because you know they love peanut butter. And I went and bought myself this super cute dog biscuit cutter. So if you're interested in this, I will link this down below. And let's just get right into it. The first thing we need to do is prep our liver. I wanna get this prepped and in the freezer so that this liver can be freezing before I stick it in the freeze dryer. We will then come back and make our dog biscuits. I'm going to cut them in bite-sized pieces for the dogs. We got the liver and the heart all cut up and put on our freeze dryer trays and they are in the freezer freezing before we put them in the freeze dryer. That just allows my freeze dryer to do a little less work. There was a little extra that didn't fit on my freeze dryer trays. I went ahead and cut that up as well, put it on a cookie sheet with some parchment paper and stuck that in the freezer so when I'm done with round one, I can do round two. Now, let's get to making the dog biscuits. These are super fun. In here, I have two and a half cups of rolled oats that I threw in my blender and blended up. You can use oat flour for this if you want, but I like to have the different textures. When you blend it yourself, you can kind of get a couple pieces that are a little bit bigger, so that's what I've chosen to do here. I am doubling this recipe. The recipe will be linked down in the description box at scratchpantry.com. We're gonna put two and a half cups of whole wheat flour in our bowl. The reason I started making dog treats is my sister-in-law, she gave me a dog treat mix to make at home for Christmas last year and I made it for my dogs and they went crazy for them. They liked them better than any store-bought dog biscuit, so now I make my dogs dog treats. This is one cup of pumpkin. We're gonna put a little bit of salt in. All animals need sodium, so we'll put salt in there. And then last but not least, we're gonna put some peanut butter. At some point, because that peanut butter was a little bit on the stiff side, I'm probably gonna have to get in here with my hands to finish mixing. Because I put that egg in there that was a double yoker, I probably should have counted that as one egg. And this dough is way too sticky. <laughs> so I'm gonna add a little bit more flour. The dough is not normally this sticky. This is the consistency you want. You want it to be kind of a stiff dough. So I definitely should not have used that double yolk egg because I basically put five eggs in here instead of four. But no big deal, just add a little extra flour if you need to. This is a very forgiving recipe. I'm gonna give it a couple kneads. I'm gonna lightly flour my surface. I'm using the whole wheat flour too to flour the surface. We are using my guided rolling pin that I just got and fell in love with. We're gonna use the 16th of an inch or four millimeter disc. I can link this rolling pin down in the description box. It is important with this recipe that you roll out the cookies evenly so that everything bakes in the oven evenly. You really wanna dry these cookies out in the oven and by having this rolling pin, it's really helped that. I'm used to rolling out cookie doughs and things with a regular rolling pin, so I'm just learning how to use this and I'm really happy with it, but there is a little bit of a learning curve. All right, let's get these cut out. We have our dog bone cookie cutter and we're gonna just start cutting them out. The dog bones are gonna go in a 350 degree oven until nice and dry. That could go anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes, so 
will be back when we take them out of the oven and I need to finish rolling out the rest of the cookies. The cookies are done and man do they smell fantastic. They're nice and dry. How cute are those? At the very end, I took the last bit of dough and just cut them into squares. So if you don't want to take the time to make these cute little bones, you can just cut them into squares. Your dogs will love them just the same, but I think the dog bones are super cute. So I do the dog bone shape more for me than for my pups. Once the dog treats completely cooled, I put them in an airtight container and at the very end of this video, we're going to have the dogs taste test the liver and these cookies. Now it's time to freeze dry the liver and beef heart. These came out of the freezer and they were basically frozen. To start the freeze dryer, all we have to do is press start and it has to cool for 15 minutes. We close the vacuum chamber so it can create pressure and then it is ready to load the freeze dryer. You don't want to load both fresh and frozen food together. You want the food to be at the same level of frozenness. Then you hit continue and you just let it go. It's going to freeze and then freeze dry. This only took overnight. I selected not to defrost because I am going to run another cycle with more of the liver and heart that is in my freezer. I now can empty my freeze dried liver and I'm pretty excited about this. Here they are completely dry. I'm going to show you how we are going to put them in jars and we can store them for long term storage or just for storage for dog treats for short term so that they don't go bad. This is the heart and these three trays are the liver. This project was probably the easiest thing I have freeze dried so far. The meat and the liver freeze dried up super quickly. If you're interested in a freeze dryer, I can link the one I have down below. I have a medium size. They are an investment. If you are going to invest in one, I probably wouldn't get one smaller than a medium. I wrote on Instagram that I was doing this project. My sister also likes to buy her beef from local ranchers and get the liver. And she has read and done all the research that I've done how healthy liver is supposed to be for you for human consumption. She asked me if I would freeze dry her liver that she got from her cow that she purchased from her local rancher. She said she was about to text me and ask me when she saw that I posted on Instagram. I said, I'd love to. That is kind of one of the cool things about a freeze dryer is if you have one, you can help other people out and you can let them use it. My other sister also asked me if I would make some kid baby food yogurt bites and I'm going to do that for her as well. It's kind of fun that my freeze dryer is not only a tool for me to use, but also my friends and family are more than welcome to use my freeze dryer. My sister Sarah that wants me to freeze dry her liver for her, we are going to powder it and we are going to put it in little capsule forms, basically to make our own freeze dried liver supplements. This is raw liver, so probably if we make it for human consumption, we will have to cook the liver first, I would assume. So I'm going to do some more research on that. There is a documentary, I think on Netflix, about the benefits of raw food for dogs and I think that this is going to be a great way to get some of that raw dog food into my dog's diet. I can't afford those raw dog food packets that you get at the higher end pet supply stores, but I can certainly use my freeze dryer to freeze up some of the byproducts of the meat that I'm not a fan of eating and give it to my dogs and they're going to love it. I got a question on Instagram if you could smell the liver while it's freeze drying. I have never smelled anything while my freeze dryer has gone. I freeze dried quite a few things now. And unlike a dehydrator, there's absolutely no odor. Let's see if they like it. Sit. Sit. No. Oh my goodness. Normally they stay. Stay. Down. They're getting the beef heart first. And they're supposed to stay there until I say the magic word. Break. What do you think, boys? Probably a texture they haven't had in a long time. Eat it, Orbit. Oh, see, Tibro is going to try to get it if Orbit doesn't eat it. Nope. Here. He doesn't know what to do with it. No. Orbit's my more cautious dog. You don't like it? Well, Tibro does. Eat it. No? 
Okay, Orbit's a no on the beef heart. Let's try liver next. I mean, Orbit wants something. He can smell it. I'm going to break this one in half, too. Sit. Maybe this is what he wants. Look at those eyes. Stay. Here, I'm going to give this one to him because he didn't like the other one. You want it? You don't like it. Off. This is what Orbit likes. Yeah, that's what you want. <laughs> to be here. I'm going to give you just a little piece. You already had the other two. Well, that was not the result I was expecting. Uh, I thought they both would have gone crazy for the heart and the liver. But if one of them has a preference for the heart and the liver and the other one has a preference for the dog cookies, I'm happy with that. I'm just glad that I was able to make a treat that my dogs both can enjoy. This is a tried and true recipe. I know they love it. Don't forget this recipe will be linked down in the description box along with the freeze dryer if you want to check a freeze dryer out for yourself. I love making fun treats for Josh and I and so why not make a few fun treats for my dogs. I haven't delved into the world of homemade dog food yet. I've seen some videos on it and it sounds pretty interesting. Maybe one day I'll be there but right now that's just not for me. To store the freeze dried goods all you need to do is put them in a jar with a tight seal on them. You want to keep them out of just the normal air because they will start to reabsorb the moisture in the air. If you wanted to store this for long-term food storage, because freeze dryers are great for that, you can get your food to last 20, 30 years. You need to put it in a Mylar bag with an oxygen absorber and seal it. But this is something that, you know, we're going to use. They'll probably get one dog treat a day. The reason I have to keep dog treats in my house is the front part of our property is not fenced. They need a little incentive to get back into the house after they go potty in the morning so they don't just run off. They tend to enjoy running to the neighbor's house and then I have to go run after them. More times than not, I'm in my robe and in my slippers and I really don't appreciate doing that. So if I have a little yummy treat that they really love, then I don't have to do that. And my neighbors appreciate me not running down the road with my robe, which at least it's not a towel, and I've done that too. If you want to know what it's like to buy a whole cow and have a hog and see that in my freezer, buying from a local butcher, something I'm super passionate about, and that is why I'm excited to start using up this liver that's been sitting in my freezer for a long time, that video will be right here. If you want to see all the amazing things you can do with a freeze dryer, I'll leave a playlist right here. I freeze dried a ton of awesome things, and I'm just getting started, and the world is my oyster when it comes to it. We're learning together all the things that can be freeze dried. I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.